To reinforce a bridge, wouldn't it be enough to just apply carbon plating? Why do some projects insist on spending more on pre-stressed carbon plates? Today, let's get to the bottom of it in three minutes. It's not that carbon plates are bad. It's that there are some tough spots that only pre-stressed carbon plates can tackle. Situation 1. The crack at the bottom of the girder is over 0.2 millimeters wide. Applying ordinary carbon plates can't best hold the crack in place, because the crack remains. Rainwater and moisture seep through the cracks causing the steel to rust, and the structural hazards remain. In this case, applying pre-stressed carbon plates creates a tensile force and pre-compression that directly pushes the crack transforming it from sealing to repairing. Situation 2. Fundamentally solving the problem. The bridge is sagging mid-span, causing severe vibrations when driving over it. Ordinary carbon plates can only slow the sagging, but can't restore the sagging. But pre-stressed carbon plates are different. During tensioning, they impart an upward thrust to the girder, lifting it 2 to 5 millimeters at mid-span, directly restoring the bridge's stiffness and instantly improving driving comfort, while also preventing secondary damage caused by deflection. The third scenario involves the bridge needing an increased load-bearing capacity, such as when it previously hand-led small cars, but now needs to handle heavy trucks. Ordinary carbon plates are passive, requiring the bridge to deform before they begin to work. Once the heavy load is applied, the bridge may not be able to stand with. Pre-stressed carbon plates are reactive. Applying stress in advance to offset 30% to 50% of the load. When the heavy load is applied, the actual load on the bridge is reduced by half, allowing the bridge to reach its full capacity. Ordinary carbon plates simply cannot achieve this effect.